In this short video, we're going to talk about the financial instrument or the credit market instrument known as a fixed payment loan. So we're going to talk about what a fixed payment loan consists of, in other words, how it works, and then we're going to do some examples about calculating the payment or the interest rate on a fixed payment loan. So a fixed payment loan starts with an upfront loan, and then it's usually repaid in equal payments. Uh, most commonly in credit card markets, we're looking at monthly payments. Each payment is a combination of principal and interest. Because the payments are equal, earlier payments in a fixed payment loan are going to be mostly interest and a little bit of principal. As the principal is paid down, later payments are mostly principal and a little bit of interest. Examples of the fixed payment loan abound. As a consumer, you're going to have fixed payment loans as an auto loan, mortgages, and student loans, to name a few. So, when looking at a fixed payment loan, there's several different ways to measure the interest rate. Um, and we have to be careful what interest rate it is we're talking about so that we can understand and compare alternate credit terms on fixed payment loans. So, let's start with the periodic rate. So, in a fixed payment loan that has monthly payments, periodic rate is the rate between payments. Again, they're usually monthly. So, the periodic rate is the interest rate you're charged on the remaining balances every single month. So I have IM, M for monthly. There's also an annual percentage rate, or the APR. And this is simply we take the periodic rate, we multiply it by 12, since there are 12 months in a year, and that gives us an estimate of the annual percentage rate. This is only an estimate of the true annual finance rate. Annually, the best measure of the cost of financing on a fixed payment loan will be the effective annual rate, or I. And the effective annual rate is actually taking the monthly interest rate and compounding it over the 12-month period, since there are 12 months in a year. So the effective annual rate takes into account that every month, interest is being assessed on the unpaid balance of the fixed paid loan. So let's look at these three different measures of interest rate in the context of an example. So my example is a car loan and a car loan of $20,000 for a period of five years with monthly payments of $500. So the cash flow here in this loan is six monthly payments of $500. So our question is, what is the interest rate? Specifically, I'd like to know what the annual interest rate is, my annual cost of financing for a car loan on these terms. So we'd actually solve this equation if we're looking for the um, annual interest rate. We'd start by calculating the monthly interest rate based on the monthly cash flows involved with this credit market instrument, and from there we could annualize it and calculate an annual rate. So let's start with the monthly rate. So this equation, there's two different ways we can state this equation here. So here I'm using summary notation, but what I'm really saying is that for 60 months, 12 months in a year, over five months, so for 60 months, we'll be making payments of $500. If we discount that to the present so that it equals $20,000, that is our monthly interest rate. Again, in Excel, it can be very simple to calculate this monthly interest rate. If we calculate the monthly interest rate, we're going to get 1.44%. Let's confirm that over in our spreadsheet. So again, we're trying to calculate an interest rate, so we're going to use the rate function. So the number of periods, there are 60 one month periods in this fixed payment loan. The payment every month is $500. The present value, what we pay for the car, we're going to put in as a negative. And at the end of five years, this loan is fully paid off. So the future value here is zero. Indeed, the monthly interest rate is 1.44%. So from there, we can calculate the effective annual interest rate. If 1.44% is a monthly interest rate, we compound it every month and we get an annual interest rate. That's our effective annual interest rate and it's 18.71% in this example. Now, if I just took 1.44 and multiply it by the 12 months in a year, I get an approximation known as the APR, and notice that's significantly lower at 17.28%.
This effective annual rate here in the middle reflects the true cost of financing because it's reflecting the compounding that goes on of the interest on the unpaid balance of the loan. The APR is really an approximation that understates the true cost of financing. Let's actually use our intuition for a minute to see what would happen if we change something in this example. What if the car payments are $600? Do you think the effective rate would be higher or do you think it would be lower? So everything else in the problem is the same. $20,000 loan, five years, but if payments are $600, what does that imply about the cost of financing? Well, in fact, the effective annual rate would be higher, A. And it would be higher because we're actually making larger payments here. So the monthly rate, if we calculate in Excel, will be 2.18%. We go over to our Excel spreadsheet, we can actually calculate this. Rate function, 60 periods, $600 payment, same loan, 20000 fully paid off, so future value of zero, and indeed, we have 2.18%. Again, we can make the effective annual interest rate here by compounding that over 12 months, and we get almost 29.5% of an effective annual rate, significantly higher than the 18.71% we had done with the initial example. Again, notice how the APR here understates the true cost of financing. And notice the higher the level of interest rates are, the more the overstatement, the bigger the gap between the APR and the effective annual rate. So intuitively, for positive interest rates, interest rates greater than zero, which of the following must be true here? One of these must be true. Is the APR understating financing costs? Does it overstate financing costs? Is it higher? Or is it exactly identical to the true financing cost? We noticed the APR was very different from the effective annual rate, and it's always less than the effective annual rate. So in fact, the answer here is A. The APR understates the true cost of financing. So in general, if we look at the APR versus the effective rate, the higher the level of interest rates, the greater the gap. Monthly rate of 0.5%, for example, the APR is 6%, 0 0.5 times 12. The effective annual rate would be 6.2%. But if that monthly rate is much higher, 2 percentage points, note that the APR is 24%, the effective rate is 26.8%. So the gap gets much larger as the level of interest rates are higher. Now let's look at a second example here, and this time I'll give you the interest rate, and then we'll figure out what the payments would have to be on this fixed payment loan. So we're still going to do a car loan, $25,000 over four years. So what are the monthly payments? The APR is 6%, as I just quoted which means that the monthly, the periodic interest rate per month, would be the 6% divided by 12, which is 0.5%. So we take that 0.5%, and what we need to calculate here is the payment where 25,000, and take the payments discounted, 48 payments over four years, discounted by this 0.5% monthly interest rate, and what equal payment will give us $25,000. Again, a spreadsheet makes it a lot easier. This equation looks scary, but the spreadsheet is our friend. So, off to the spreadsheet here. Let's see. We want the payment this time. This time we're solving for the payment, so we choose the function called payment. So, we need the interest rate here, which is 0.5% per month. It's a four-year loan, so there will be 48 months in a four-year period. We're borrowing $25,000, and the loan will be fully paid at the end of four years, so future value is zero. And with that input, we get $587.13. 
So if we have the interest rate, we calculate the payments. If we know the payments, we can see what the interest rate is implied.